I am so excited. We have the coolest project happening on the farm. I've never done this before. There's a little bit to it, but I'm really excited and it's gonna pay off huge for the farm. We are putting in an automatic livestock waterer from Canarm. I can't really express how excited I am for this because we live in Manitoba where we have four seasons. Two of them are fairly harsh, that being summer and winter. In the summers we have like plus 40, the animals need constant water, and then in winter we have minus 40. Water freezes instantly. Right now we have to haul buckets by hand three times a day. So this automatic waterer is going to save me time, energy, so that I can do more important things on the farm. So I'm really looking forward to this. That's gonna keep our animals healthy and us healthy. We started our project by locating the water line. We were able to connect to a return water line into our well that was already installed by the previous owners. Contact your local planning department to make sure you are safe to dig. Dig a trench for your water line, ensuring you are below the frost line. Canarm recommends digging one foot below the frost line. Starting to dig the trench was a wild experience. You don't really realize how much ground you're about to move, and seeing it above ground is very interesting. I recommend coming up with a plan of where you will put the excavated material so that it's not only easy to move around, but it's easy to fill back in when you're ready. The depth of your trench will depend on the region. Because we are in Manitoba, we had to dig eight feet down. Check the depth of your trench frequently. You can use the arm of the excavator to tell the depth or you can use a tape measure. Just make sure it's safe to reach. Connecting to the return line happened fairly quickly for us. Putting the insulation down was also a quick process. If possible, buy multiple fittings so you're not having to make several trips to the store and try your fittings as you go to make sure that you have the right ones. The diameter required for the water line will depend on the distance it needs to travel, but use minimum three quarter inch. If you are running several waterers off of one water line, use a larger diameter. Install an elbow where the water line heads up. Contact an electrician to run an electrical line in the trench if your local codes permit. If not, dig another trench for the electrical line. Canarm recommends using conduit. Backfill as you lay your lines and insulation. This helps your trench walls not fall in if they're left too long. And just be careful to not hit your already installed water line as you are using whatever machinery to fill the trench. Use an 8-inch diameter clay casement tile or other insulated riser tube to bring the water line up from below the frost line to the waterer. Do not fill the riser with insulation. Leave it open. The riser tube should be 2 inches above the concrete pad. We ended up using 1.5-inch rigid insulation boards that we cut into 1 foot widths by 8 feet, and it worked out really well. Once we had our pipe going vertically, we insulated it with four different pieces of insulation. So in total, that was six inches of insulation. The water supply line should be brought up to seven inches above the concrete pad. Canarm recommends installing a shutoff valve under the fountain. Leave the excavation approximately six inches below grade to allow room for the concrete pad. Place your form, ensure it is level, and pour the concrete base. It should be six inches thick. You can level your concrete pad, but just make sure to leave texture for grip once it dries. Because we deal with small livestock, we made our concrete pad a bit smaller in size. If you are using this waterer for larger livestock, stick to the guidelines that Canarm has set. Use concrete anchors to secure the waterer to the concrete base. We set the anchor brackets into the concrete pad after we had centered the waterer. Canarm highly recommends using two inches of rigid foam insulation against the concrete inside the base of the unit to prevent cold air entering through the pad below. Have an electrician connect your waterer to a 120 volt power supply. Bring the power supply through the back of the box. Connect the black live lead to the blue and black leads. Connect the white neutral to the black and white leads. Attach the ground wire securely to the ground lug. Connect the flexible hose to the brass fitting with the hose clamp. 
slide the hose bracket over the brass fitting and place it through the bowl so the threaded side is up. Secure the flexible hose and brass fitting to the bowl using the brass nut. Connect the flexible hose to your water supply line. Screw on the brass elbow to the brass fitting facing the bowl. Attach the plastic valve to the brass elbow with the water supply orifice facing down into the bowl. Mount the long set screw to the end of the plastic float ball and attach it to the plastic valve. Turn on your water supply and allow the bowl to fill. Seeing the water run was a huge moment for us. Adjust the water level as needed by moving the float upwards to raise the water level or downwards to lower the water level. Place the cover over the float and valve assembly and secure with the provided nuts. Your waterer is ready to use. Our first animal checking out the waterer. She approves. This has to be one of our most important projects to date on the farm. With zero hands-on experience of installing a waterer, I would say this project is very doable. Make sure you know what your skills are or what your boundaries are so that if you're running into a problem or if there's just something you're not sure about, then you know to reach out for help in your installation. Be patient and have fun. This project will definitely pay off for you. Fresh, clean water for happy, healthy animals.